The Tragic Real Life of Laura Branigan. Sadly she was only 52. Laura Branigan was a Grammy-nominated pop singer, songwriter and actress. Her cinematic, synth-driven, club-friendly dance pop and groundbreaking music videos sent her singles and albums to the top rungs of the charts and made her a huge concert attraction. From her clear-throated, fist-pumping post-disco singles like Gloria to the Sultry, Roland 808 Vamps and Drum Machine Loops in Self-Control and Beyond, Brannigan was a singles artist whose career arc coincided with the rise of the MTV era. Her chart successes mirrored those of other 80s female icons such as Sade, Kim Wilde, and Kim Carnes. Her place in pop culture was so prevalent. Two of her songs were selected for the soundtracks of a pair of the decade's most iconic films, Flashdance and Ghostbusters. Brannigan placed five singles in the upper reaches of the Hot 100, six albums in the Top 200, and two dozen songs split between the dance music and adult contemporary charts. She continued to work in theater and film, and to record with other artists, until her death due to a brain aneurysm in 2004. She was born Laura Ann Brannigan on July 3, 1952. Brannigan grew up in Brewster, New York, a suburb of New York City. Though singing seemed to run in her family her grandmother had studied opera in Ireland, and both her parents had good voices and led the family in singing at the dinner table Brannigan had no ambitions to pursue a vocalist's career in her youth. In high school she was extremely shy. She did, however, enjoy singing harmony with friends and performing in her church choir. To help Brannigan overcome her shyness, one of her teachers persuaded her to try out for the school musical in her senior year. Brannigan did, won the lead in Pajama Game, and discovered her calling. She reminisced for a 17 interviewer. It was amazing. Once I was up there, I felt a tremendous confidence. I realized this was my way of expressing myself and that was it. After graduating from high school in 1975, Brannigan enrolled at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City to prepare for her new vocation. At first she commuted from her parents' home, but then she moved to Manhattan and worked as a waitress to pay her rent and tuition. Brannigan found in waitressing a form of preparation for performing that WASNT available in her classes. In dealing with people all the time, she told Seventeen, I learned how to make them comfortable, and that helped me a lot to overcome my shyness. And I learned how to ignore hecklers. Meanwhile, Brannigan was also trying to break into the music business. After landing a job as a backup singer for Canadian folk artist Leonard Cohen and touring Europe with him, she decided to become a soloist. Knowing that her chances would be better if she had a good manager, she sought one. Sid Bernstein who had managed talents such as the Rascals and the Bay City Rollers and had promoted the Beatles' first U.S. appearance, listened to Brannigan sing in 1977 and agreed to help her become a star. According to Sarah Crichton in Harper S., Bernstein started Brannigan slowly, first featuring her in concerts held in his office for his friends, and gradually inviting record producers to these informal gatherings. At first, this tactic was unsuccessful. Finally, in 1979, Brannigan auditioned for Amit Erdogan, the chairman of Atlantic Records, and he signed her. An initial album session produced mixed results Atlantic was unsure what style best suited their new talent. Eventually the company hired Jack White, a German producer famous for his efforts in what Crichton labels the Europop approach. White selected the songs for what would become Brannigan's debut album, including Gloria, which had been a hit in Italy a few years previous. Before the single was released, White introduced Brannigan to manager Susan Joseph. After talking to her, the singer became convinced that Joseph could represent her interests much better than Bernstein. Brannigan switched managers, but while she did indeed become a star under Joseph's guidance, she also became the object of a $15 million breach of contract lawsuit by Bernstein. Despite this controversy, what Seventeen designated as Brannigan's smoky vibrato voice struck a chord with pop audiences. The success of Gloria was followed in 1983 by another European-style hit, 
Solitaire, originally done by another artist in France, and in 1984 Brannigan had a smash with the title track from her third album, Self Control. Though she has made her reputation by belting out danceable numbers, Brannigan has also had success with ballads such as 1987's Power of Love. She has modeled herself most after French torch singer Edith Piaf, and revealed her goal as a singer to Harper's Bazaar. I want to touch people's hearts, to get right down to their souls. In the mid-90s Laura took a hiatus from her career and devoted her time to caring for her husband, who was diagnosed with cancer, until his death. During the late 90s while dealing with her loss, Laura performed only the occasional concert. In early 2001 she made her return to the studio. 2002 saw the release of The Essentials, a digitally remastered hits compilation. During 2002, Laura also performed the role of the singing Janis Joplin in the hit New York City musical Love, Janis. 2004 saw the release of Self Control 2004 and Gloria 2004, collections of remixes of the original Brannigan classics produced by some of Europe's top remixers, which feature stunning, newly recorded vocals by Laura. During this time Laura was at work performing concerts at various venues, as well as continuing to record her album of new material, and it was with great expectation and anticipation that fans everywhere were awaiting its release. Laura was back touching audiences once again with the unique four-octave range voice, consuming passion, and undeniable power that is pure Brannigan. Sadly, Laura passed away suddenly on August 26, 2004 from a brain aneurysm. At the time of her passing, Laura was working on the production of an EP, a manuscript for a cookbook she was in the process of writing, and the opening of her official online store. Laura Brannigan was a unique, magnificently gifted singer who had an unbridled passion for life, with these attributes ensuring that she will never be far from the minds of those who love her, both for her many contributions to the music world and for the indelible impression she has made upon the lives she has touched and continues to touch. The voice, the passion, the power. Her legacy lives on. Rest in peace Laura Brannigan, goodbye legend.